I'm going to read two poems for you. Um, this is called Reaching Around for You. Uh, reaching Around for You. Every invitation to lie back under concealing foliage resembles in some way that earliest invitation to wander the heady orchard in the long, sharp afternoon, or to slip naked into the slough with the wiry boy who peeled each apricot as if slightly uncertain how to partake of it and savored dribbling it down his damp chest between his long, clammy legs and moistening his whole delinquent body with pleasant juices. The river rocks globular and slick, the catfish with its wet, dark skin and the afternoon's durable, glassy eyes. I do not mind you closing your own eyes, reclining summoning the image of a lover put away till now, because virtue is hardly what either of us has saved from our separate, desperate beginnings, and because stone fruit from a tin is almost as good as fresh when the spiteful frost arrives. takes its title from a 1950s movie starring um, Ray Maland and Frankie Avalon and uh, Alice Fay, uh, entitled Panic in the Year Zero. Um, it was one of many of the films of the 1950s that exhibited the, exhibited the anxiety over the atom bomb. Um, and I think that we're living in a time where people have continued to per perpetuate that anxiety to the point where it's just, it's kind of cliche. So um, this is called Panic in the Year Zero. Bless the tourists in their Alcatraz rocks parkas on the upper deck of a double-decker in any given February bluster. They could have sworn it would be warm here just because the cryometer says it isn't cold. Who the hell would look at a cryometer? People from Arctic places, I suppose. People who must have flown in over the map's flat face, who must have seen the latest developments, the Delta's brackish mouth, windmills waving white banderoles against the crispy brown hills. Spring looks a lot like summer, looks a lot like drought. What would anyone expect if they knew the way planarity invites the opportunist? Aren't the dispatches the same reaching them in Chehalis, Waterloo, and Asbury Park? Even if folks don't watch what passes now for news, I assume they go to cocktail parties, <laughs> or they Twitter. They don't all have snug jammies and Ovaltine, though they seem to get snugger by the minute. What? what kind of help could they get if they could get help? Help them make this dull show seem like art. Help the supporting cast appear in the end, summoned from the cities of the plain, and appear to end and end again as in a wide shot of the Battle of the Man. Be tolerant of those you cannot seem to understand and other such advice. It's the quiet part of the morning service while I'm writing this down. Thank God for the quiet part. And thank God for the one who held me to my wickedness, who asked me to revel in it, even though it cost us both a little dignity. It's easy for me to look back at what's destroyed. I knew it would be destroyed like a wicked town. 
I never thought, that town is where the heart is. I simply thought, that town is where the town is. Usually, someplace inhospitable and filled with handsome men, the kind who kill you with their handsomeness or their acute cordage. Hell is the most miraculous invention of love, no matter how the love turns out. Hell is the place from whence the music of longing, which accounts for most of what we call music, gets written. Yet I'm tired of this idea of hell, no matter how functional. Sure, I've had my petty doubts, like the extra pills I've stashed in my Eva Braun box, waiting for the bomb to get to hit Bakersfield or some other place in the near distance. This plan only works if there's some kind of distance. <laughs> the sign that it's time to pull up stakes, head for the durable hills with my pemmican, my porta pot, my jerry cans, and yes, I too would have oval team. <laughs> Though I guess it would be made with water instead of milk. Such would be the dark days, if we think the dark days really must come. But I have lived through perilous times, and I do not love them. I cannot pretend I'm smart about such things. I mean, look at the sloppy slew I've been, and you were there, and you. You've seen me rumple down the sidewalk like a moocher. Lord knows you've seen me hit that sidewalk on my keister. Scandalous, the tourist said, and flashed. And the, when the worst of the drama came, they clucked their tongues and threw their change. Something inside each one of us is cocked like the ear of a hound, and half the time we hunt, and half the time we rescue because we're never really sure if the humans will beat us or feed us. If we are our better selves, it's just a wonder. And if we're not, even in our legends, angels come. They try their best, but we're such shits. And it's not because we want to screw them. We screw everything. We're <laughs> mankind, it's what we do. I've probably sullied a few white wings myself. That's not the problem. <laughs> so much has passed between us. We're practically cousins, Mazel tov. <laughs> <laughs> The problem is, we're so bent on an ending, we'll sunder the entire valley with conviction, with an invented coda of immunity. Nobody in this picture is granted immunity. If it were available, I'd have gotten it for myself. Enough with the apocalypse already. Think of all the history you've read. It started somewhere. It started at absolute zero is what you thought. Just because you couldn't know what came before. But imagine, something did. Oh!